Good day and welcome to another interesting package on Showcase. Today's package is a mind-blowing package as I'll be showing you how our palm sleepers are being made and also how you can become a business owner of a palm sleepers. Sit tight and enjoy this one. My name is Akim Nukune Pats. I'm born into a family of five. I'm the second. So, um, my parents are uh, engineer and Mrs. Okone Pats. They are alive. I'm from Itu local government area in Akwaibum State. I schooled in Monef Kiddy School in Akwaibum. That's my nursery school. Secondary, Thurston High School in Akwaibum. Then university was Moderna University, Elele, River States. I moved to Abuja January 2021. I could not stay in Lagos because I, my siblings are staying in Lagos. And my parents, my mom told me, hey, go to Lagos, go and try. And I, to be frank, I went. After one month, I got tired. I could not cope. So after a while, I now told them December 2020 that I wanted to change environment, like to start up, like start afresh. Know how other places are. So they told me no problem, I now choose to Abuja. I had a friend that told me, ah, there are opportunities in Abuja. Come, you get a job, it's easy and all those things. Life is um, it's not that expensive like people say, everywhere is, it's fair. So I was like, okay, fine. When I came to Abuja, my intention was to walk. I tried though. Hmm. I tried. But the work was not forthcoming. So I just had to fall back on my business. That was what I was doing to survive. Nobody introduced me to it. I ran into a post on Facebook during lockdown. Before then, I had an issue when I want to get shoes for myself. I have a fat feet. So that's a problem. So I might see a pair of slippers that I like, and if I put my leg, it won't. It is either the front, either here is too tight or something. So that was my problem. That was the issue I had all throughout. So I came across a post on Facebook during lockdown about. Um, studying and um, learning how to make supers under two weeks but it was a little a token so i got interested i was like okay fine i enrolled for the class the two weeks it was on whatsapp i wrote for the class and after two weeks i saw that i could make a supers for myself via whatsapp so i was like if i can make a supers for myself via whatsapp so if i gotta learn one on one i'm gonna become pro so after the lockdown, thank God, I now enrolled for the class. So my teacher told me it was three months and I paid for it and now enrolled for the supers. You, you have to start up, you just need to get the basic tools, which is the filing machine like pencil, ruler, gum. Then you get some of the materials to start. So let's say roughly, if you can have like 50,000, you could start work from home. Because basically you must get a shop. Because me, I work from home. You can sit at your home, the comfort of your home and work. But just get the basic, tools that you need to use to work that's just it so i said like fifty thousand now it's fair it's okay for you just to start one thing when you want to learn a skill or something you must have passion for it you must love it if you don't have passion for it no matter however they teach you it will enter it will go out so already since i already grew passion for you since i already was already in love with it so i think i learned i learned the supers under one month so the other month i was need to practice because it's not all about learning you have to practice at home too 
So I learned under two months. And my teacher were nice people. Her name is Latun Signature in Aquabrum Step. She was she was nice. Then she also had someone assisting her, which is Mr. Larry. They were nice. They were we all we all living like a family. So she was always more of bringing tax. You say today you do this, you submit, tomorrow you do this, submit, and if you make a mistake, the punishment you get is oh yeah, you have to go back to the market. And her place in the market was like 40 minutes. So you'd see that imagine the transport. You didn't even have the money. You imagine the transport to pay back day and then you come back. But I didn't really look at all that because I knew I was learning. Like me, I made plenty of mistakes. Like I made plenty. I can count plenty of mistakes I made. But I didn't look at it as a bad thing. I just took it that it was a training that with time, I won't be making all these mistakes. So it was fun. Everybody will not have the same kind of brain, luckily brain or way of thinking like every other person like me i used two months to learn well i know that some people but normally in issue making it takes from six months to one year to learn but i know that some people that they might take one month two months depending on how sharp you are and depending on how passionate you are concerning the business Like when you're walking, take your time, don't rush. If you have a prayer of supplies that you want to do, don't tell the person, I'll give it to you under two days. No. Like to produce a supplies, you have to take like five to seven working days. So within that time, you take your time and do it. You craft it with love, not just doing anyhow. Like what some people used to do on the roadside. You take your time. I do it with love, with passion. Like, when I'm at home, before I came to Abuja, if I want to walk, I don't eat. And my mother will be like, ah, ah, you have not eaten since morning. And I'm like, so that's just it. She used to tell us, walk, make sure you take your time to walk and make sure your walk is clean. Do it out of love. Don't just rush so that when the client sees it, she, she or he will fall in love with it. I learned it before I relocated to Abuja. Then when I moved to Abuja, I had to contact, I was. I looked for um, someone that makes a surplus over here in Abuja so that I could compare what I learned back home and here. So I had contacted Elizabeth Black. So I went there for another three months training. Let's say it's like a kind of like an upgrade to get more knowledge. So when I was done, you understand getting knowledge from two different people so you carry the two put it together and then that's it the class i paid for was i paid thirty thousand naira. that was without materials so let me not say i had a bulk money because i wasn't working i was at home but I had little savings apart from the money I paid. So that's what I was using to start. And then I didn't do like to keep. It was all basically on order. I'll do a pair, deliver it to a friend. Then if the friend should say, ah, I would like this, can you do it for me? That was how I was working. Now I see if I had a bulk money somewhere. So along the line, my uncle and saw now called and like ah i've seen your work i love it well where can i help you or something and i told him okay i would love a machine if you could give me a machine and some other little little things so that's how he now that's the support i got from him like getting the machine the filing machine and then some other stuff let us see if i had one big money or something so that's it I won't say I'm making like profit, 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 but it's average, it's fair. Because right now I'm, I do it by myself. I don't have anybody that assists me. It's only when the others are much 
Like if I have a silk pass, I have a sandals, I have a shoes. When the others are plenty, then I have colleagues that I could call, they should assist me. But with time, and the others don't come in like that because number one, I don't have a shop, I work from home. So the only way I only advertise my business only on social media because now everything is on social media. So wherever you are, Wherever you are, you make profit. Wherever you are, it wasn't me. You have to stay in one place for you to make profit. Or you have to stay in But now everything is global. Everything is now on social media. So, not really. But it's okay. Everything now is on social media. I get my customers from social media like Instagram. And also referrals too. And also, when people see me carry my stuff, if I'm coming back from the market, and people see me carrying my stuff. Ah, this surpass is fine. Ah, do you know what? I say yes, I'm the one, and then do not place. But that's, that's how I make, that's how I get customers. Before they were not patronizing Nigeria, made in Nigeria, but I think now they are doing that because, oh my, we have to compare. Now, now, the dollar. It's not the same like before. So some people will be like, well, why do I have to go outside and place an order for something I know I can get here? And especially we that we make the shoes, you, you can bring your own design for us to make for you. And we'll give you the guarantee that you can wait till further notice unless you get tired. So let's say now it's fair. It's better than last time. Where I get my designs from, um, like people, like I said, when people place an order, they will show you a picture and say, this is what I want. And you do what I ordered versus what I got. You have to give them, me, I try to give them exactly what they want. I try my best. Then while some other design, I could go through Pinterest, or I could go through other people's Instagram page and I look, ah, this design is nice. I could try it. Or there's one, I won't, I won't call it a bad habit. But anybody that walks and pass and I see the person wearing a shoe or a slippers or a sandals, I must look at your leg. I don't know how it happens, but my eye will go down there. And I'll be like, okay. As I'm looking at it, I've already, in my mind, I've already sketched something. So I can, when I get back home, I could just try something up. And that's how I get my designs. I buy my materials from Yaya Market because it's large. They have different different people sell different material because you could go here, you don't like this one, you could enter the next shop, so it's big. That's why I get my material from Yaya Market. There's also a way you can build the shoes from the scratch. So some people, they like the foreign sole. While building the shoe from the scratch, like this one is belt from the scratch. This one is belt from the scratch. The foreign so I don't have it here. That one too is basically mostly for men. But I know mostly people like me, I love making, building it from the scratch because me, I'm sure that when I build it from the scratch, you could wait till that kingdom come. I get my customers by passer by and referrals. Because when I make a surpass for, let's say for my sister, and she wears it out, and so her friend will say, ah, I love this surpass. Who made it for you? She say, ah. She'll mention my name and from there. And also passer by when they see me walking, maybe I'm just coming back from market or maybe I'm just holding it to deliver it to somebody and they just pass by and ah, oh, this surpass is fine. Are you the one that made it? I don't know, but sometimes some people are always shocked that it's a lady that is the one doing the surpass. I don't know why. And they'll be like, oh, I would love to patronize you. So I, I get my money, I get my profit basically from referrals and passer by modern social media. I don't know, I don't know why they expect that all ladies are supposed to be working like maybe sewing or pastry or chef or something. So, because like one day when I, because of this light issue, I didn't have light at home. I had to go to a nearby shop to finish up someone's order. 
the way guys were passing and like ah madam well done no ah auntie well done I, i'm like i don't understand what's happening they're like ah for you to do this kind of work ah they were just helping me because you know it's not easy and seriously it's not easy because if you sit for let's say straight six hours or seven hours you end up having waist pain back pain headache and all those things so they are like imagining everything and all the sisters are like well done i didn't expect that a lady will be doing this The challenges I face is this price, how I call it, the way the economy is going now, the fuel wahala, no lights, and then the increment in prices of materials. Because if you tell a customer now, a client, oh, please, the price I used to make for you before is not the same now, they will think you are lying. They will not understand that. A leader you used to get for a pay 1,000 naira, they have increased it to 1,500. How are you supposed to do? And you have to give them the top notch test that you have been giving them. So that's the challenge the increment in materials, the fuel, sometimes light. You have to give us lights and all those things. So it's not easy. So far, I've, I've made friends with the people I buy materials from. So, I, when I go and I see this material, I'm like, ah, I like this material, what do you think? Is it? So, because of the relationship I've made with them, they'll be like, no, this one is not good. This one, if you use it, it's going to give you a while. Take this one and all those things. And apart from that, you too, me too, when I look at the material and I touch it, and I look at it, sometimes my instincts will just tell me, mm -mm, don't work with this one, use this one, it might disappoint you. But if I refuse and I take the one that will disappoint me, because I've done it before and ah, I got, I cried that day because I had to go back and get another one and start again from the beginning. So that's just how it is. Someone placed an order. Someone saw my work and like, oh, I like this work. I want, I love you to make a shoes for me. And I was like, okay, fine. At that time, I I was broke. I was like, okay, fine. I already calculated how much everything was going to be, and I was patiently waiting. And when I tried to reach out to the customer again, the client like, how fast I have been waiting to hear from you. Like uh, something came up and they gave me one excuse and I will not lie. I sat back and was disappointed, I was heartbroken. But what can a baby girl do? You have to move on. It's one of those things you get in business. So it's a normal thing. But God has been faithful, sure. That's just it. For me, so far, that it has happened to me before. If you rush a walk, you make mistake and you have to go back and start again from the beginning. That's number one risk. So you have to take your time. You don't need to rush. You don't need to rush. You just need to take your time and do it. And also, this is how you could get a material and you're knowing, you know very well that this material will give you what you want. When you walk and walk and walk, and before you know it, it's possible as you're doing, as you're trying to couple a shoe, it is. What do you do? So the risk is you have to be careful with the ladders and just take your time and walk. That's just you don't rush. Because more shoe making is not easy. Right now, the way the economy is, you have to do something. You cannot just sit down in the house, not doing anything because, oh well, it's not easy. You just have to learn, you just need to learn a skill or just need to do something, even if it's for you to sell a car. But just 
need to do something because it's not every time you ask your husband, hey, baby, please give me 2K. Or if you're a single girl like me, how you want to see the cash? Or do you want to be standing on the streets and be the everything is business? You have to do something with your hand. You cannot just sit down idle. You just need to do something with your hand. Like I said, even if it's for you to sell a car on the roadside. So far, you know, you're getting your daily money. Even if it's 1,000 you make in a day, you will be happy that, oh, I made 1,000 naira. Okay, I can save this so amount. I can use this so amount. You'll be happy that you're making your own money. That's just, you just need to do something now, right now. In this economy, the way it is, you just need to do something. Everybody that is doing business understand the way it is now. Like some people that do thrift and also the dollar increment, the increment in fuel, like I said before, the increment in materials. In fact, it's it's not easy, but how we go do? God day. We just have to we just have to continue striving and working hard. When I sit and look at my mother, my mom is a nurse, she's a caterer, she's a fashion designer. When I sit and look at her, and I'm like, this woman I've not given up for the past how many years I've known her. Why will I? So I'll just, I'll just sit there, I wake up, I say, I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg, get behind me, Satan. I don't. I have to put on. And if I feel really, really down, because there's sometimes I break down, like I sit at home, I just break and I just start crying. I'm tired and I need someone to talk to. I just call my mom because since she's able to withstand all this that she does till now as we speak, and she'll just encourage me and I, I have to, I'll wake up again and continue. I'm not like giving up and say I'm close and sell everything. No, 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 no. Because it is a time that there, there, there are some times in life that when you sit, you just get tired of everything. You just like, I'm tired. Especially for we that we are single, you just say, I'm tired. But if you're not careful, if God is not by your side, you might enter into depression, and which is bad. But by God's grace, if you have people, loved ones around you that can encourage you and continue to push you, like, don't worry, everything is going to be fast. Everything is going to be fine. That it's, I know it's not easy, but you just have to push on and you, there's no how. You'll be good. God has been faithful, like I said before. I've not had any challenging customers. All the customers I've had are sweet and nice people. That's one thing I'm grateful to God for. But I also mean I've not had people that are like they are like they want to and when I have such situation I I try to calm it down, be friendly, because that's another thing. If you're a business person, you have to be friendly. Even if you're hot temper, you have to keep it aside and be friendly. No matter, you just have to be because customers are always right. It has to be friendly. So I try and I, when I hear from the customer, and I also try to explain to you that this is this, this is that. And then at the end, we got peace. And everybody have their own secrets in their own business, what they do to make their business to stand out. But there are some times that you just need to discuss with a fellow entrepreneur. Like if you have an issue, you just want to hear another person's opinion and then you now put it, you now put everything and then you say, okay, fine. But there are some entrepreneurs that when you ask them questions and they're like, they are not really being open to you. They're like, this one I want to come and get my own idea and put it on. But it's not fair. Sometimes, um, Everybody doesn't know everything at once. You would need to discuss with people and get advice from other people so that you can put your head and make 
Everybody wants their business to grow. But we just need to, like they say, one Nigeria. Some of them should just try and be open to people. That's all. You mustn't tell the person your secret, but you could just give an advice. Okay, I think if we do like this, it will be okay. I think if we do like this, it will be okay. Don't do like or don't do like this. Or well, some of them they even to answer you. If we be sent a DM, they will answer you. So it's that bad. And some of the entrepreneurs are not friendly. Some of them are not friendly. Some of them are rude, which I think is not good. No matter what, even if you're rude, be rude to yourself. But when you see a fellow customer, try and smile or try and be friendly. Even if you don't know how to be friendly, learn and be friendly because you don't know who will be of help for you tomorrow. That's just it. My advice for entrepreneurs, like I used to advise myself, that it's not easy. Room was not built in one day. It's not easy. I would like, if I say it's easy, it's a lie. It's not easy, but for the fact that what you're doing is what you love doing, you don't have to give up. Continue pushing on. Like me, whatever I do, I put God first. God is my priority. So whatever you do, Put it to God in prayer. Tell God this is what you want and He will not fail you. Continue pushing on the sky is your limit. However it won't be for this Niger, why I was a Google maker. That's just it. So as I fellow entrepreneur, you should don't worry. We go make her more. Hmm. This Nigeria we will make it. I hope that on this episode, we're able to learn the process in which our palm slippers are being made and also we are convinced that made in Nigerian products are actually the best. Thank you for watching today's episode. See you next time on another interesting package on Showcase. My name is Rahina Shewu Abdullahi. Bye for now.